we're going to be talking about reading dog behavior and learning how to understand what our dogs are communicating. But first of all, I want to give you a friendly reminder that dog skills is every single week on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's all about the human end of dog training, which is something that I really specialize in. I know how important it is um, to get our dogs to listen to us. And in order for them to listen to us, we personally need to know what to do as humans. And that's what this series is all about on Wednesdays. So again, today, what is your dog communicating and reading your dog's body language? So I want to start off with a story about my dog, Seiki. Why is it even important to know what a dog is communicating and who really cares? We just want to get our dogs to do what we want them to do, right? Okay, well, yeah, I agree that it is important to have boundaries and help our dogs comply. At the same time, though, if we're not listening to what our dogs are communicating to us, it can be really hard to get them to do what we want them to do. So when I um, had Seiki, I, I had him before my daughter was born, and then my daughter was born, and Seiki showed a lot of fear around my daughter. Um, there was one time when he snapped at her. Um, actually, there was two times that, that he snapped at her, and I remember just feeling so much stress and, and so much fear at the time, so I can relate if you guys are experiencing any of this with your dogs, but even more so, um, I could just immediately ignore my dog's communication and then just be like, you need to just get along with my daughter and just try to force him to do that. But instead, I noticed, okay, you're feeling uncomfortable. Let's give you some space. And so I gave him that space that he requested. And then I started hearing positivity in the presence of my daughter. So we had like a little area where Seeky could hang out and, and my daughter wasn't allowed in that area. Um, but there were doors, so Seiki could see my daughter at times. And every time he saw my daughter, treats would come <laughs> every single time. And I was really consistent with that. If I couldn't do that, then I just shut the doors. And so then over time, Seiki was like, ooh, Iris means treats. Iris means food. Iris means good things. And then over time, Iris was able to start feeding Seiki. And then I was eventually able to take down the barriers and then have them interact with each other. And Iris started doing the positive things with Seiki. She would play ball with them. She would give them food. And then they developed a much more peaceful and harmonious relationship. So that's what I want to create with you and your dog is to help you be able to read your dog's body language so that you know what is your dog communicating to you? What are they feeling? And then how can we meet those underlying needs so that we can have more peace and harmony in our lives? I do want to really, really, really encourage you guys to leave comments um, so that, you know, I know that you're there, but even more so because it allows me to be able to interact with you. So if you're watching the replay, definitely leave a comment. I'm going to see those comments. I'm going to respond to them. And it's going to help you get a lot more value when you can interact with me as well as type and think about the stuff that you're learning rather than just watching the, the video and, and let it play um, in the background. Of course, you can have it play in the background, but what I'm saying is the more you interact with me, the more it's going to get into your long-term memory, the more you can apply this material and the better results that you're going to have. I also encourage you to share this video with others so that you can help out friends and family and other people that might be struggling with getting their dogs to listen to them and understanding what their dogs are communicating to them. And I do really quickly want to say that on um, Saturday, February 18th, I will be doing a live in-person event at the Burton Library on getting your dog to come to you the positive way. And you can go to this link right here uh, to register for that event. And the link is pinned in the comments below. Um, definitely um, register, come and meet me. I would love to uh, see you in person in Ohio. Okay, so my first question to you is, are you aware of your dog's body language? Yes or no? I would love for you to comment below and let me know. 
if you are aware of any um, things that your dog does with his or her body that is communicating to you. And I'm excited to read your comments. So a lot of times when our dogs show us body language, we assume what our dogs are feeling. So we anthropomorphize, that means that we're humanizing, we're, we're taking ourselves as a human and then putting it on our dogs instead of looking at our dogs as dogs. Yes, we do have a lot of similarities, a ton of similarities, but they still are dogs. So it is important that we don't um, put our stories on our dogs. So for example, I'll hear people say, oh, my dog pees every time I leave the house because he's mad at us. Or um, my dog um, is jumping on other people and he knows that it's so embarrassing to us because as soon as I start yelling, he runs into the other room. So basically we're taking a thought or a story that we have about our dog's behavior and then putting it on the situation. That story may or may not be true, but when we really buy into that story, it actually prevents us from looking at the behavior objectively. So what I would like you to do is to drop those stories, okay? But first, I wanna ask you, have you put stories on your dog that may or may not be true? And if you have, share. I really would love to read them and hear what they are. Um, I know I have as well. Um, it's so easy to do and all of us do it. You're not wrong for doing it. It's not gonna go away but we don't wanna put energy behind these stories to the point that we can't view everything objectively. So what we want to do instead is again, come from a more objective standpoint and look at what body language do we see in our dogs? And when your dog is showing this body language, what are the environmental triggers? So what's going on in the environment around the dog when they're showing this body language or right before they're doing this body language, such as somebody came to the door or I took a bone away from my dog or my dog was eating his dinner and I walked by him. Um, what is happening in the environment when the dog is um, showing this body language? And then what need is your dog communicating? And the need actually, you know, we'll kind of realize is pretty much the same almost all the time. There could be more in-depth things, but I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, our dogs are very simple creatures. They're not as complex as humans are. <laughs> they really want attention and love, right? So to help you with this, we're gonna start looking at learning. Sorry, before we start with all of those things, we're going to learn how to read our dog's body language. We're gonna look at a happy dog, a, dogs that are showing calming signals, fearful dogs, and aggressive dogs, and learn how to read all that body language. And then from there, then we're going to start being like, okay, what is triggering our dog? What's happening in the environment that's causing the dog to feel this way? And then what is the dog's need? So that we can meet their need and then allow more peace and happiness to be created in our lives with our dogs. So my first question here is what happy signs do you see in this dog's body language? Oh my God, I think this dog is so cute. I love herding dogs. My, my favorite, I'm, I am a little biased. So write in the comments and let me know, like what do you see with the ears, the mouth, the entire body, the body weight? Um, I know we can't see the tail here, but where do you think the tail might be if we could see it? And then compare it to this. These are signs that a dog shows when they're happy. Okay, so body language of a happy dog or a relaxed dog or a calm dog. We have the wiggly body, right? And a nice relaxed open mouth and very, very soft eyes. The body weight is generally balanced, so not super forward or back. And the tail's at a neutral or kind of like a medium height. And the tail is wagging sometimes when they're really happy with a wide and fluid wag. I'm actually gonna capitalize that because 
that is really important to pay attention to that wide and fluid wag. So most of us are pretty good, I think, noticing when our dogs are happy. However, can you explain these signs objectively in your dog? Please learn them because it's really going to help you in the long run with meeting your dog's needs so that you can have more peace and harmony in your life with your dog. So my dog is happy when these things are happening or the environmental triggers. I wanted to, you know, give some examples. So you understand what environmental trigger is. My dog is eating a treat, being pet, being massaged, playing fetch. These things are happening in the environment and then my dog is feeling happy. So think of times that your dog is happy and what are the environmental triggers? What's going on in your dog's environment when your dog is happy? And comment below. I'm super excited to read those comments. I really wanna reply and create this to be a very, very interactive video for you guys. So what is your dog wanting or needing when he is feeling happy? More treats, more pets, massage more, more fetch or play, right? He's really enjoying himself and he probably wants more, more, more. <laughs> Seems like our dogs sometimes just, we, um, we can never give them enough, right? They're like kids. Give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. But we love that feeling. It feels so wonderful when we're giving to our dogs and they're, and they're feeling happy and we can receive that. And so much peace and harmony is happening. So we want to have our dogs feeling really happy and more at peace more often. So when we're going over these other body language signs, our goals are to help our dogs shift out of that aggressive, fearful type of energy and get them into a more happier state. So fearful dog signs. The dog um, is backing up. The tail could be between their legs. We got a stiff body, a contorted back. So kind of an arc. The ears could be back, the head might be lowered and the body weight generally is more backwards as if the dog is trying to move away or escape. So we can look at this picture here and what fearful dog body language do you see here? And I'm so excited to read your comments. So make sure you write in here so that I can really see that you guys are understanding this and that I'm communicating clearly to the point of understanding. Because if I'm not, then I wanna change that and help you understand. So we're gonna watch a video. So I want you to notice this dog, okay? This owner is amazing, by the way, I love her. And she was completely oblivious that her dog was feeling fear here. And when I pointed out, it was a huge aha for her. So it is really important to realize when our dogs are feeling certain emotions. Daisy, now. How's her dog to her? Now watch what her dog does when I hit play here. Notice what signs do you see that are showing um, us that this dog is feeling fearful? What objective signs do you see? So I could see that lowering of the body, right? Contour and the body even was a little jerky there. We got the ears are back, the head lowered. Again, the body, the head lowered again, the dog is trying to move away, trying to back away. So the body weight is in that escape, moving away. Okay. Now. So does that mean that this is a bad owner? No, I'm not trying to pick on this owner at all. This owner's amazing and I love her. She just didn't realize that this was happening. And what was the environmental trigger? The environmental trigger actually, oops, you know what? I'm wondering, I think I actually might've forgot to hit the audio here. No, I did. There was a sign that popped up on my internet and was talking about audio. So I wanted to make sure you guys can hear. <laughs> um, so she just didn't realize this dog was scared. And what was the trigger? Well, it's her reaching over the dog and holding him on the harness there or by the collar, right? That's actually triggering the dog to feel scared. Well, gee, isn't that helpful to know, right? 
can we meet the dog's needs? Can we help them feel more comfortable here by maybe grabbing underneath the collar instead? And then eventually, you know, which we'll talk about further on in the video, um, can we then do counter cushioning where we pair the grabs with treats? But definitely coming from underneath the dog can make it be more pleasant and then pairing it with food and then letting the dog go instead of keeping them here the entire time. Um, she is pairing the situation with food and I, and I think that's why the dog um, didn't go to a bite. Because if a dog is scared, they can, you know, escalate. And the dog was starting to feel some positivity here, but there is still a decent amount of fear going on. So this would be a situation on, okay, I noticed that the collar grabs or the harness grabs are causing you fear. What is the um, underlying need that we, that we wanna meet here? And we wanna help the dog feel more safe and happy, okay? And over time, um, if she were to grab underneath the dog here and pair it with food and do it for short periods of time repeatedly, the dog would start getting more used to being grabbed by the collar and she could progressively start going on the side of the dog and then eventually going on to um, behind the dog uh, over the head uh, when the dog was ready. That would take, you know, it's going to take quite a few weeks or months. And this is an owner that I did work with through online dog training. Um, and we did talk about this um, to help her be more successful. So this might be something new for some of you guys. Some of you guys have might not have even heard of calming signals. And calming signals are things that dogs do when they're feeling a little bit uncomfortable um, and they just really wanna calm down, okay? So um, some of them are like yawning, shaking off, sniffing, scratching, looking away, walking away from you. And it's not every time they're doing these things that they're doing a calming signal, but definitely if you're training them or interacting with them and they show one of these signs, they could be requesting, I want a break, I want some space now. Can you please um, stop uh, uh, pushing me to the point of overwhelm? I just want to do one chunk of learning at a time and have some integration or space or breaks in my learning, and then we can go back to it again. And so, Again, they are still wanting that underlying need of, of feeling safe. Um, I love this video because the owner, uh, again, I work with this owner online as well. I do do in-person training in Northeast Ohio, just so you guys know. Um, but I think it's really cool to be able to say that I can help out anybody no matter where they live. So this owner um, had a fearful dog. And this is a video that she took. And when she learned the calming signals, she started pointing them out. So she's actually going to tell the calming signals that she sees in this dog. So I want you to notice, um, write down in the comments, like what calming signals you see and notice if they line up to what the owner says. A little lip lip, lip lip. So lip lip, that's one I did not have written down that is a calming signal. Are you on the go? a lot of lookaways. Do you need water? Big yawn. Ah, oh, did you catch that one? Mary just going wherever she wants. There's another look clip. It's a good place to, to end it. And notice the owner didn't put any pressure on the dog to keep walking. She gave the dog space and then let the dog resume the walk when the dog was ready. Because the dog was scared in the mountains. Yeah, this dog had fear issues with just being outside. <laughs> Some dogs do, and that's okay. Okay, so now we're gonna shift to aggressive body language. So some people hate this word. If you don't like it, change it. You could call it reactivity, I don't care. Anger, whatever. Uh, generally, the body weight is forward, eyes are fixated and open wide, ears are more forward, body is stiff, tail is high, and the wag is happening very, very quickly, or 
the tail is very, very stiff and the head is in alignment with the spine. So what aggressive signs do you see in this dog? Please write in the comments. I want to hear what you see. Um, so again, you can integrate this very, very well into your long-term memory because learning how to read dog body language is so important to help you create more peace and harmony with you and your dog on a day-to-day -day basis. So excited to hear what aggressive signs you see in this dog. And then do you think a wagging tail means your dog is happy? We've already kind of talked about this there and I'm not, you know, jumping on you. I just want to see what you're thinking. Do you think a wagging tail means your dog is happy? Yes or no? Hmm. Wonder what people are going to write. So a wagging tail does not mean a dog is friendly. An aggressive dog may have a flag tail and the tail is usually held high and it's wagging very, very quickly. A relaxed dog will have a tail that is at a neutral height and the tail is a much wider and fluid wag. Sometimes the tail will wag in a circular fashion. I'm gonna get this little dude right here and do a demonstration. So very, very stiff tail, base of tails up high. That would be an aggressive tail posture or flag tail and it might even wag faster than I can actually do here and then a friendly dog or a dog I don't want to use friendly because all dogs are friendly for the most part there's just certain things that trigger them a happy a dog that is feeling happy or more relaxed is then going to have the space of the tail is going to be at a neutral height that can be different for so many dogs if you got an Akita it might be a pretty high so where is your dog's normal neutral height and then the tail is generally going to be very wide when it's wagging and it might even go in a circular fashion as well, okay? That's when a dog is happy, okay? That the, the wider um, fluid tail wag. Okay. So my dog is feeling in control when these things are happening. Right, what are the environmental triggers that are causing your dog to feel uncomfortable? So a person walks by the house, a visitor enters the house, a toy is removed, a dog walks by. Oh, you can list a hundred things here with all the clients that I've worked with. There's so many things. I put on a harness, I put the leash on, um, I walk away from my dog. Um, I don't know, every dog is different. So you have to um, identify those environmental triggers, right? Unless of course you wanna work with a dog trainer, I can help you identify those. Um, what, environment or, what environmental triggers cause your dog to express body language that is uncomfortable? So they're showing fearful body language, calming signals or aggression. What are those environmental triggers? Please, please, please write them in these comments. I so wanna read them. Um, and I, I think it's fascinating to learn like, what are the certain things that cause our dogs to feel in a certain way? And if this is new for you, you might want to, you know, reflect on it later again, because if you start realizing those times your dogs feel uncomfortable, you can start changing certain things that you do with your dogs to help them feel more at peace and more harmonious. And it can also transform to the point that those things no longer trigger your dog, which is really fun when that happens. I do that all the time with my clients. So what is your dog wanting or needing when he's feeling uncomfortable? Space, someone to move away. That was so we played space. Um, to be honored and acknowledged, to feel safe and loved, all right? So if a person comes into your house and your dog feels fear or aggression, he's not saying he wants that person to honor and acknowledge him, but he's saying his, he wants his owner to honor and acknowledge that he's feeling fear or aggressive. Can you please honor that instead of making me wrong about it or trying to reprimand me or change that behavior uh, in a way that is coming from control? Can you help me feel safe? So I'll give you a human example. My daughter got her hair cut yesterday and she ended up hating the haircut when she was done and she bawled her eyes out and she cried while I was still getting my hair cut and I just held her. I just held her. I let her feel her sadness. I did not make her wrong about it. I gave her the need of safety and love. 
And then we were able to have a conversation about how she didn't want her hair cut that short and how she thought she had to make it that short because I suggested that, but that wasn't really what she wanted, right? So then she felt honored and acknowledged because I listened to her. And then you know what? All of a sudden she liked the haircut. It was really that simple. It did not take that long. Probably about, um, you know, she cried for maybe 10 minutes on and off. And then, you know, within about half hour, 45 minutes, she liked her haircut. Now, if I would have made her wrong about it, yelled at her and then just been like, what the hell is your problem? You said you wanted your hair cut that length. I heard you. Or she have any crickets? You said that haircut was okay. What's going on? I could dump all these stories on her, right? And then I'm gonna help, then she's gonna feel more stressed and then it might take her even longer to feel more grounded. And we do this with our dogs unintentionally, okay? I'm not trying to criticize you guys. I'm just trying to give you awareness. I've done it, we've all done it. And of course we can't speak English to our dogs. But we can honor and acknowledge that they're feeling whatever they're feeling and help them feel more safe and loved. So what are some ways you can help your dog feel more safe and loved? And I'm going to open up the window. I'm getting really warm. My apartment is wonderful because we have free heat, but we live on the third floor. So sometimes it just gets really, really warm. Um, so we can take an uncomfortable situation and reduce the stress of the situation, then pair the situation repeatedly with positivity. And generally that's, that can be a lot of things. Usually I use treats, but sometimes I'll use certain types of massage. Sometimes I might use play. The biggest thing that I want you, you to get here is we reduce the stress of the situation. You cannot get your dog to relax and be receptive when they're in the middle of a meltdown, where they're doing a whole bunch of calming signals or feeling highly aggressive or fearful. Just like my daughter was crying really intensely. She's not receptive in that moment to me helping her realize how cute her haircut is. She wants validation, okay? And she's too stressed to even hear me. Once she calmed down, then I, you know, then we could start opening up to, oh, you know what? I think your haircut's cute. I like it that way. I bet a lot of other people are going to say they like it. So we can take that situation with our dogs and then we can say, how can we reduce the stress? Well, could the visitor be standing outside of the house instead of in the house? Could the dog that's triggering you be farther away? We can't control them on our walks, but we could do a setup where we enroll a dog a friend's dog or a family dog that our dog is scared of, have them both be on the leash, have them be far away. The dog is below threshold. Um, if the dog is scared of having the harness be put on, can we put the harness on only partially and pair it with positivity? So we can pair it with treats in all of these situations in a lesser um, level of stress. And generally, the most common ways of doing positive reinforcement training when a dog is stressed is counter conditioning and systematic desensitization. There are other ones. Those are, you know, a very common ones. And if you like to Google these things or look them up, these would be the words that you'd use. And you can get a lot of positive information on how to help your dog feel more safe and loved in these triggering moments. Counter conditioning taking a previous negative situation, pairing it with something positive, and then the brain then says, oh, this is actually a good thing now. Systematic desensitization is we reduce the stress of the trigger, and then we gradually increase the, the stress of the trigger over time. But as we're gradually increasing, or maybe we should say the intensity of the trigger, because we reduce the stress of the trigger, and then we gradually increase the intensity of the trigger, and the dog stress still stays low during that entire process because we're gradually changing it from being less stressed to more stressed. When we jump from, you're really stressed right now, let's train you in this environment, it doesn't usually work that well. So something to wonder about, because you know this is known, that shot collars, pawn collars, show collars, whatever, they're out there. You can get your dog to listen by using them. but 
are shock collars, foam collars, choke collars, or any pain-based methods meeting your dog's needs? So is your goal to actually control your dog and get the behavior to stop? Or do you actually want to help your dog get their needs met? And then as a result, as their needs met, their behavior transforms. I don't know if you guys have heard of Marshall, Marshall Rosenberg, but he is an author that I've been studying lately. And he is an author about nonviolent communication and compassionate communication. And he's learned how to listen to people's underlying emotions and their needs and can reduce conflict. And like, I mean, I, I'm saying like this because, you know, wars can go on for years. I mean, he's done it in wars actually. <laughs> countries that are fighting against each other. Um, he's a really cool dude. Um, and he's figured out like when you acknowledge that underlying emotion and that need, then all of a sudden the conflict dissolves. So in the dog world, obviously we can't do it through English, but we can do a similar thing. And that's what this is based upon. And it's science, right? Um, and this book is so cool that I was like, oh, I need to, you know, kind of talk about it more from a dog perspective, because um, a lot of us don't think of our dogs as um, having needs when they're upset. And when we can meet those needs, we can actually transform their behavior. So again, the secret, your dog has to be below threshold in order to learn. Oh, that's the biggest secret ever. I can't tell you how many people try to train their dog when they're so scared or so aggressive or they're doing so many calming signals and they say, my dog won't eat. I can't get them to eat the treats. I can't do positive reinforcement. Yes, your dog is not going to eat the chocolate cake when they're having a panic attack, are you? No, you gotta have your dog be below threshold. Yes, you'll eat the chocolate cake when you're minorly triggered maybe. Mm-hmm when there's a spider in the room and it's really far away and it's not moving towards you and it's in a more of a calm state, then maybe we can do something positive. You're eating the chocolate cake or breathing or meditating or whatever that positive thing is for you. And then we gradually move this, the spider closer as you in, um, integrate each level. And then we're doing counter conditioning and systematic desensitization here. So here comes the fun part. We're gonna watch some videos, yay. So how does the owner make Margot feel safe and loved? Watch this. Watch, um, uh, sorry, um, the owner, I thought I did a typo there and I didn't. So watch the owner and notice what the owner does to help Margot feel more safe because Margot's gonna do calming signals. So we might watch this video more than once. First, you gotta notice the calming signal. Second of all, you gotta notice what does the owner do to help Margot feel more safe and loved? Does she drag and pull on the leash and just make her move? What does she do? All right, so. Looks like when I pause it, it's gonna be dark. So maybe we won't do that for very long. It is not. All right, look away. Oh, look what the owner does. Get the treat off. Oh, lovely. Wonderful. Okay, sniff. Right when there is tension on that leash, the owner stopped. We got a lip lick. The owner is pausing, keeping the leash loose. Dog is sniffing, calming signal. Margo is waiting. Let's the dog follow at their own time. Dog's pulling that direction. She waits. I think we might have had a lip lick there again. I couldn't tell. So, I don't know. Did you guys get it? Let's have you watch it again if you didn't. This can be a lot to take in. Look away. Oh, the owner even did a look away too. Yeah, you can mirror the calming signals back to your dog as well. Sniffing, backing up on the leash and waiting. Oh, look how the owner, lip lick, look away. The owner is so acknowledging the dog. I'm validating that you're a little stressed out with walking across this road. And I'm not gonna be forceful and do pain-based methods. I'm going to acknowledge your need and then we're gonna go across. Now, if the owner keeps
keeps doing this type of training over and over again? Is the dog going to start getting more confident with crossing the road? Yes. Because you're acknowledging the dog's feelings. You're validating how they feel. And then you're making it be a safe environment instead of just saying, you can't feel this way. You're not allowed to feel scared right now because we're in the middle of the road and might get run over. Well, if there's a car coming, of course you want to get your dog to move quickly. And if there's not, then why can't you be more in tune with that, right? And if your dog has fear with crossing roads, don't go across roads that have five zillion cars. Start with roads where there's less cars around, where you can actually do that validation and, and um, help the, the dog feel heard so it can feel more safe and up. She also used traits in there too, which was cool, right? So yes, this dog did start feeling less anxiety in multiple situations. And this also is another client that I work with online. But again, if you live in Northeast Ohio and you wanna do in-person training, I can do that as well. Oh, goody. Okay, let's look at what this owner does to help this dog feel more comfortable. So this dog is showing aggressive behavior. When someone comes up to the house and you can see these little people by the car in there and the owner is going to do some counter conditioning. Okay. Go, let's get it to play. So we're going to watch the dog go crazy in the beginning here. Yeah, I got to hit play. Ooh, can I get that paused? Let's see. Nice tail, that's up high. So they're gonna be wagging fast or stiff. It's not fully on the camera all the time, and that's okay. It is wagging, that's a flag tail. Ooh, 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 and the owner is saying, oh, let's give you some treats when you notice a person over there. So dog looks out, notices a person, and she gives treats. Now. If you do this when your dog is barking and the dog barks first and then you give them food and they bark again, you give them food. Are you rewarding the barking? Yes, you could be. So again, we wanted this below threshold. So that was one thing that we did talk to the owner about. It'd be better to start the session off without the barking if we could, with the dog being farther away from the window. And that could be on the leash. And we did end up implementing that over time. Do you want to so, let me know when you think? We got treats going on here. And the dog's body language is now shifting to being more relaxed. He's not happy per se, but he's definitely um, less stressed than he was at the beginning. And that's our goal is to, to work to that, to that degree, okay? Cool, wonderful video. Um, and again, this was obviously a client of mine that I worked with. I love working with dogs that have reactivity issues and helping owners have more peace in their house with that. Um, it is a fun thing for me to do. Okay, so this is a dog that's showing fear. And what is the owner doing here to help this dog feel more safe and loved? So notice the fearful body language that we see first. And then let's notice what the dog is doing or the owner is doing to help this dog feel more safe and loved. So I, I feel we, we started out. So there she is. And the dog going farther into the harness, right? Um, so we can see she's pairing it with food. The dog only gets food when his head goes in the harness. If he's going around, he's not getting the food. But let's see what, what fearful body language do we see here? And I feel like I just want to slow this one down. I think that just would be fun to do. Just really do. Okay. So here we go. Notice how the body weight's more back than, than balanced. It's a little bit back. He's wanting to move back and then he does move back. Oh, look at all that inching forward there, right? Body weight is back. We got a stiff spine, right? The tail was stiff there too. 
Okay, so we can see some fearful body language um, in this dog. I do like how at times we are seeing a relaxed neutral tail height and a wide tail wag, which is telling us that probably this dog, you know, is somewhat below threshold, right? Because again, they're not going to eat if they're that stressed and they can't actually learn that well if they're that stressed. So we do want to start seeing the behavior start shifting to being more relaxed as we're doing the training. And if that's not happening, then that means your dog is too stressed. We're not breaking it down enough for your dog to learn. That is the number one thing, guys, that I see people do is they don't break it down to the point where the dog can actually integrate the concept. They flood them into the immense stressful situation and then expect them to get this. And I'm saying this over and over again because they want you to get it. Hopefully seeing that video helps you because she could have just threw the harness on and then given a treat afterwards. Well, yeah, you made it be positive by giving the food, but if the dog was feeling that amount of fear, they might not even eat the treat anyway. So we can break it down by just having the dog put the, their head in the harness just a little bit and then a little bit farther. Once they're ready to go to the next step, let them integrate the current step before you move to the next so that they're feeling more, more happy and, and relaxed. Okay, so the wonderful question for you is, what have you learned to help your dog feel more safe and loved? What will you do differently than you have in the past to create more safety and love for your dog? Ooh, I'm so excited to read these. I really am. What are you going to write? I just write and, you know, I would invite you to go all out and be super detailed on this because it's going to allow your brain to really integrate it and take it in. If you're able to, um, you know, put it into words and writing can really help things go into your long-term memory. I definitely want to see these comments because I want to help you, but journaling it and writing it with your body will actually integrate it if you can write it in a journal as well. Um, so think about this and you might need to answer this, ask yourself this question over, you know, a period of weeks or months to really start, you know, letting this sink in right? What have you learned to help your dog feel more safe and loved? What will you do differently than you have in the past to create more safety and love for your dog? Hmm. What a great question. Love it. Okay. So again, watch the replay, comment below and share this video with others. We want to help out the world. We want to help them understand how to have more peace and harmony with their dog in a loving way. And again, a friendly reminder that on February 18th at 12 p.m. in Ohio, I will be doing a live in-person event at the Burton Library, getting your dog to come to you the positive way. And you can register at this link right here, bit.ly slash Burton come. The link is in the comments below and it is pinned at the top. Definitely click on that link and you can come and meet me. I would love to see you there. And you might be the perfect fit for the Dream Dog program. In this program, you'll feel much more peace and confidence when you're walking your dog both on leash and off leash because your dog will reliably listen to your commands. If you just wanna work with in-home issues or just leash walking stuff, I can help you that with that too, okay? I just wanna make that clear. And we can help you no matter where you live. This is a cool thing. If you have the internet, then we can help you anywhere with Zoom, okay? If you live in Northeast, Northeastern Ohio, we can help you in person or through Zoom. Totally your choice. And I specialize in the human and adult training and really work with positive reinforcement. So with me, you're going to feel a lot of compassion and understanding and love towards yourself and your dog. To book a free phone chat, you can go to this link or text me. Um, I was going to say, I'm not sure why I wrote text me, because um, I don't think I have my phone number on there. So I think I need to take that out. You can go to this link to book a free phone chat um, with me. And um, this link is pinned in the comments below, okay? And if you want to learn about 
other services that I offer. This link is also um, the link that you can go to that. Um, you can click at that link and it's also at uh, pinned in the comments below as well. So you got three links, one that you could enroll into the live event in Burton, Ohio on February 18th. You got a link where you could schedule a free phone chat with me, see if we're a good fit to do training, or if you want to observe or learn about other services that I offer, you can click on this link. And again, they are pinned in the comments below at the top. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been my pleasure to spend this time with you. And again, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. as best that I can, I will be here doing dog skills on Facebook. Looking forward to seeing you again.